Hello, I'd like to share some information with you today in regards to part two of healthy coping skills for uncomfortable emotions. And this information is coming from um, verywellmind.com, uh, written by Amy Morin and reviewed by Stephen Gant. So I know in part one, we discussed um, healthy coping skills um, that were emotional or emotion focused and problem focused strategies. What I would like to share information with you on today is the other side of that coin, right? Which is the unhealthy coping skills to um, try to avoid. So just because um, a strategy helps you endure um, strong emotions, um, that does not necessarily mean that they are healthy. So some examples of unhealthy coping skills are uh, drinking alcohol, using substances, drugs. So substances may temporarily numb the pain, but they uh, will not resolve the issues. Um, substances are likely to introduce new concerns or problem issues into your life. Alcohol, for example, is a depressant that can make you feel um, worse than before. Um, using substances also puts you at risk for developing a substance use abuse problem, dependency problem, and uh, it may create legal issues, financial problems, and a variety of social concerns. There's also overeating. Food is common um, as and commonly used as a coping strategy. Um, and trying to kind of stuff your feelings with, if per se, with food can possibly lead to an unhealthy relationship with food, whether that is um, weight issues. Sometimes individuals um, are, are on the other end of the spectrum and they are like restricting their eating. Um, that could possibly um, make a person feel like they're in more of a control. And that can be just as unhealthy if it's uh, utilized. Um, and that's the most healthy way. Um, sleeping too much can be another example of an unhealthy coping skill. Uh, whether you take a nap when you're stressed um, or you sleep late to avoid facing the day. Sleeping offers a temporary escape from the issue concerning the problem. However, though, uh, when you do wake up, the problem uh, will still be there that will need to kind of be addressed. And I stress that if any of these unhealthy coping skills are um, uh, maladaptive behaviors that you engage in, um, not periodically, but more frequently, I would definitely say um, seeking the support of a mental health provider can offer some um, type of assistance to you. Another unhealthy coping skill can be avoiding things. Even healthy coping strategies, right, can possibly be unhealthy if you're using them to avoid the problem. So um, some proactive coping if you will, um, would be like coping skills that are usually discussed as a reactive strategy. When you're feeling bad, you do something to kind of cope, right? Um, for example, if you worked hard at losing weight, proactive coping strategies could help you maintain your weight after the weight loss um, has ended. Um, like proactive coping has been found to be effective um, or an effective way to help people deal with predictable changes. Um, like, for example, a decline in income during like retirement. So if you're facing a, a stressful uh, life event or you've undergone major changes, try planning ahead if you are able to. Consider the skills that you use to cope with the challenges um, you're facing. So uh, when you have a toolbox of strategy skills, uh, coping strategies, you'll know kind of what to do. And you, that could possibly help you feel better equipped to face the challenges ahead. 
So one thing to be mindful of is find what works for you. A coping strategy um, that works for one person may not necessarily work for another. It is important to develop your own toolkit of coping skills that you find useful. You may need to experiment, practice with a variety of coping strategies to assist you discover which ones work best for you. You might find a certain uh, coping strategy that uh, works best for specific issues and or emotions. For example, engaging in a hobby may be effective and an effective way to unwind after a long day at work. And going for a walk in nature may be the best approach when you are feeling sad. When it comes to coping skills, there's always room for improvement and again, practice. So assess what the, uh, the other tools and resources you can use and consider how you may um, continue to sharpen your skills in the future. And again, I think with the support of a mental health provider, a therapist, a counselor, um, a licensed um, LG, PC or LCPC um, that can be of assistance to kind of identify what the uh, triggers are, identify what coping skills can be of assistance, implementing those coping skills, practicing those coping skills, processing those their thoughts and the feelings um, before, during, and after. Um, having those distressing moments and then kind of uh, practicing um, the coping strategies, the grounding strategies. So I hope this was of assistance and I hope you enjoy the remainder of your day.